more video that surfaced with Brian Sims. And you may recall that yesterday, Brian Sims, he's a lawmaker from the state of Pennsylvania. And he was on video harassing an elderly woman that was sitting there praying in front of a Planned Parenthood, uh, a Planned Parenthood facility. She was just sitting there quietly praying. And this guy, Brian Sims, goes up, tries to get her face, says that he's going to come to her house and bring a bunch of people in protest to try to scare her and intimidate her into silence. Well, it turns out, and I didn't get to see this until after the show yesterday, that there was video footage of him actually pre uh, presenting himself and saying, hey, I will offer up anybody $100 if you happen to know who these people are so that we can find them and was doing this to teenage girls. I had seen the reports on that, but I hadn't seen the video itself. Now we actually have the video. Take a look. Outside the Planned Parenthood at Southeastern Pennsylvania. Oh, no, they're leaving now. What we've got here is a bunch of protesters, a bunch of pseudo-Christian protesters who've been out here shaming young girls for being here. And so here's the deal. I've got $100 to anybody who will identify any of these three. So we're I'm going to donate to Planned Parenthood. I'm going to donate to Planned Parenthood. So look, a bunch of more. white people standing out in front of a Planned Parenthood, shaming I'm people. Really There's sorry. nothing Christian about what you're doing. I'm nothing Christian at all about what you're doing. Hi, nothing Christian or loving or godly about what you're doing. So I've got a hundred dollars to anybody who will identify who this. A hundred dollars. See if you got some friends out here. A hundred bucks. You just, you, it, it'd be easier if you just give me your name and your address. Um, uh, Rich, come on. Rich Bomeinski. Rich, where are you from? Uh, Lansdale. Rich, what makes you think that it's your job to tell women what's right for their bodies? And the truth is, I'm not really asking because I don't care. Shame on you. Guys, Planned Parenthood out here faces attacks daily from people like this. From from pseudo Christians saying that they are, are here to somehow pr protect their, their own version of Christianity. Um, so do me a favor. If you've watched this, please consider giving $100 to Planned Parenthood. I'm going to do the same. All right. So that's Representative Brian Sims. And you'll notice a couple of things here. First of all, when he first confronts the people, they're not protesting. They're not holding picket signs. They say, we're just here to pray. They weren't shouting people down or, quote, shaming them as he accused them of doing. They said, we're just here to pray for the kids. That's the only reason we're here. And so this guy tries to chase them off. And I don't know if they were already leaving and he just happened to catch them while they were leaving or him showing up with the cameras. The reason they left, I don't know. But either way, he's he's obviously trying to chase them off, even if that's not, even if they were leaving anyway. But nonetheless, they say, look, we're, we're not even here protesting. We're just praying. We're not shouting people down or saying, uh, saying things that make me, all we're doing is praying in front of the place. And yet he still continues to go after them. And here's another thing. At the bare minimum, it's super creepy for any grown man, whether you're a representative or not, it's super creepy for any guy to walk up to a group of young teenage girls and say, hey, I'll give anybody that happens to know their home address $100. That is super creepy. And even though I don't think that it was because he was attracted to them or trying to, it, it, nonetheless, do you not even have enough brain power to realize that that could be optically a mess? that that might at least look really bad. And I find it hilarious. Well, it would be hilarious if it weren't so sad. I do find it incredibly ironic that this guy, who again, like I was saying yesterday, claims to be this champion of women, somebody who is a defender of women and defender of their rights, is trying to intimidate women into silence and is standing there saying, I want the names and the addresses of these people and I will pay people if they will give me that information so that I can show up late at night at their house and protest them and try to scare them into submission. I can't think of anything less feminist than trying to keep women from speaking through fear. I mean, that's about as anti-feminist as it gets. And furthermore, he calls people again in here, racist, despite being it being the very first thing that he always says when he tries to attack someone. You heard in that clip, he said it's a bunch of white girls. Well, why would it matter whether they're white or not? 
see, that's the, the, that's the thing that is so unfortunate about this for him is that he tries to constantly refer to other people as racist, despite the fact that race seems to be the first thing he always notices. It's the first thing that he sees. It's the first thing that he points out about somebody, and it's something that he tries to attack someone and attack their opinions by pointing out their race, basically saying, ah, oh, you're white people, your opinion doesn't matter. It doesn't get much more racist than that. But here's Brian Sims, and what's hilarious about that is when he started calling them white girls, one girl says, yeah, I'm not even white. I don't. She did seem to have a little bit darker skin than the others. I don't know, maybe she's Hispanic, maybe she's Asian, I'm not sure. But in any case, he accuses them, or he says that they're white girls, and then one of them happens to not even be a white girl. He's making this assumption that, oh, well, they have this political opinion, ergo, they must be white. He's assuming that race and opinion go hand in hand. This is a problem that a lot of people in our current political climate have. They assume because of somebody's race, oh, they must think this way because all white people think this way, all black people think this way. They are judging people based on their race before they get an idea of who they actually are. That's the textbook definition of prejudice. So Brian Sims proving himself to be an incredibly racist individual despite being someone that claims to be standing up for minorities. And another thing, too, that you'll notice, because if you watch the clip that we played the other day, he was constantly saying, OK, let, let's have a conversation. You're just walking away from me and you're not wanting to talk. And I just want to have a conversation. Let's actually talk about your Christian faith, trying to seem reasonable. And then he has that one guy at the end of that last clip that we played that actually wants to talk to him about his faith, that actually wants to have a conversation with him. And he says, what's your opinion on this? You know what? I don't care. I'm not going to listen to you. You're wrong and you're disgusting. Yeah, this is clearly not a person that is open to discussion. Now, I know this is highly technical stuff that you need a degree in philosophy to really understand. But if a guy says that he doesn't care about your opinion and you're disgusting and you're wrong and then walks away before you can say anything else, this is not a person that is interested in having a conversation. I realize that's a very difficult concept to grasp. But believe me, if that's the case, this is not somebody that is interesting, uh, interested in having a dialogue or potentially having his mind changed. This is somebody that already has his agenda in mind, that has his mind made up. All he's trying to do is shout people down and intimidate them. That's it. That's the only reason he's interested in doing there. And like I said, his motives are not for because he cares about the people in the clinic, not because he cares about people in general. He is driving a political narrative. And the way that you know that he's driving a political narrative is that he is sitting there trumpeting the wonders of Planned Parenthood while suggesting that you need to donate money to them, even though it's a taxpayer funded, uh, I mean, not entirely taxpayer funded, but a company that gets quite a bit of their funding from taxpayers. This guy, Brian Sims, getting some pushback, he responds on Twitter uh, by tweeting this out. So the other day he says, bring it Bible bullies, you are bigot, sexist, and misogynist, and I see right through your fake morals and your broken values. Hashtag be real. Again, this is a guy that every time he sees someone he disagrees with, he calls out their race as though it's some kind of insult. And then in a second tweet, don't discriminate against our discrimination. Don't bully our bullies. Don't hate our haters. A word that I can't use on this program and baby cagers. So first of all, the guy has a foul mouth trying to lecture other people about morals. Second of all, this has nothing to do with your stance on abortion. There are a lot of people that are actually Democrats and didn't vote for Donald Trump and not Trump supporters that happen to also be pro-life. And again, he's trying to make a reference there, I presume, to the border, which is also hilarious because those same policies started under Barack Obama and were continued by the Trump administration, but nonetheless, not even getting caught up in that. He's assuming that everybody that disagrees with him on abortion is some kind of rabid Trump supporter. I'm not a Trump supporter. Didn't vote for the guy in the last election. But I'm still pro-life. And again, this proves the point that I was making the other day. 
This is a person that sees things in left and right, and there is no in-between, there is no nuance, and people aren't capable of making their own decisions on these issues. Public opinion polls show that even people that consider themselves very far to the left, there's a lot of them now that are turning more and more pro-life, some of which think that abortion ought to be outlawed altogether. Support for abortion has been dropping dramatically since about 1992. But he's assuming that everybody is either for him or against him. It's us against them. This is not a person that is doing his own thinking or trying to ration out his own arguments. All he knows how to do is name, call, and intimidate. Oh, hey. What are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. And if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nap.